Well, hey friends, and welcome to this patio makeover. The weather has been warming up so beautifully here in Charlotte in the past few weeks. And with that, we've been spending a lot of time outdoors. But unfortunately, our patio just hadn't been our favorite place to spend time in, despite it having a beautiful view overlooking the trees. And to be honest, it was just never a spot that I paid all that much attention to. Coming out of the winter, it was looking pretty sad and neglected. So in this video, we are going to give my patio a major refresh. We're going to turn it from a basic builder grade patio into an oasis. Along the way, I want to share with you some simple and easy tips that you can use to transform your outdoor space on a budget, which stay tuned until the end because I'm going to be breaking down my budget for this entire project. But now without any further to do, let's get right into this. Okay, well here's the space that we have to work with and honestly, we never really done much with this patio area beyond putting in a nice but pretty basic set of patio furniture. And after the winter months, this area was definitely looking worse for wear. There were some pretty serious stains on a lot of our cushions and everything was overall just pretty dirty and grimy. Our siding especially was in pretty rough shape since we hadn't cleaned it since first moving to the house. So our first step was to power wash everything. So it began just by clearing all of our furniture out to give us a blank slate. Our plan was to power wash the floor, the ceiling, the siding, all of it. And so to do that, we needed everything out of our way. And once that was done, Christopher got to work with the power washing. This is something that he was really looking forward to doing. And it really is just incredibly satisfying both to do and to watch. And for this project, we had considered just renting a power washer from our local hardware store. Fortunately, we actually had a friend with a power washer who let us borrow it. So all that we had to pay for for this entire space was the gas to use it. This really didn't take all that long to do, but it just made such an incredible and immediate difference. Part of the way through the project, Christopher and I were saying to each other that we'd actually forgotten the color of our original siding because so much dirt had built up. It was so nice being able to see that fresh linen color come back and all of the dirt and grime that had previously built up get washed off. Now, as you can see, the impact of this power washing was huge. While Christopher worked on that, I actually was over in the garage deep cleaning all of the cushions for our patio furniture. And earlier this year, I invested in a little green machine, which is a portable carpet cleaner exactly for projects like this. So I just went to work slowly trying to deep clean all of our cushions to get all of the stains out, just to remove that kind of layer of grime from them. We made the mistake of leaving them out and not covering them up either in the winter or during pollen season this year. And you could definitely tell by the state that all of these were in. Of course, we learned our lesson for the future. I already have plans to purchase covers for these for the colder months this year. But fortunately, the green machine did a great job of removing the stains from these. And honestly, they looked pretty much brand new by the time I was done with them. I have to say this one was definitely the most satisfying to do. It was really cool just to be able to watch that chocolate ice cream stain just disappear. So I was really happy with how all of these cushions came out. They really look as good as new. And then we took a bit of a break because the weather had gotten pretty stormy. So we just resumed this project the next day. And on the docket for this day, we wanted to tackle the patio floor. When our home was first constructed, our builders put in this very drab, basic concrete patio, which quite frankly, I have never loved. So I scoured the internet for different options that we could use to resurface this patio on a budget. We got in quotes in the past for installing a ground level deck, for replacing it with pavers, and a few other different options, but they were all quite expensive, literally in the thousands. I just felt like there had to be a more affordable way to do it. So when I stumbled across these deck tiles, I immediately knew this was the solution that I was looking for. 
Not only are they super easy to install, Christopher and I did the entire deck ourselves. They just kind of snap perfectly into place, but I'm obsessed with how they look too. They're made out of a composite material, so they're super durable, but they have a really gorgeous, very realistic looking wood grain on them that in my opinion gives them a very elevated look. For the most part, this was a very straightforward project. We just snapped the tiles into place, but because our patio has kind of weird dimensions, it's 13 and a half by seven feet, we did run into a bit of a situation where we had to cut some of the planks to properly fit. So Christopher got out his saw and he was able to cut all of our pieces to size. And the easy ones were the tiles that we just cut in half to achieve a really gorgeous staggered look. We figured this would help kind of mimic the look of actual decking, which looking back, I am so glad that we decided to do. Then the two kind of more finicky parts that we had to tackle where we needed to do the corners to make sure that the edges would align with the side of our deck. Then also once we were about 90% of the way finished laying all of our patio tiles, we realized that it was overhanging the deck by about an inch and that was before we added our edging so what we ended up doing was just removing the back layer of patio tiles and then cutting one of the rows off of each board to make each piece a bit narrower even that with a bit of careful measuring didn't prove to be too challenging though we were actually able to complete this entire deck in under two hours And the final thing I did here was just to add these small edging strips to the end of the deck to really give it a more polished and completed look. It really is quite subtle, but I just found that these edgers made the whole thing just feel so much more expensive, which you gotta love because these were one of the most affordable decking solutions that we looked at. We were able to get all 100 square feet of tile that we needed for under $700. So to be sure, it was still a bit of an investment, but in my opinion, it was well worth it. Then the next day, we completed this project over the course of a long weekend. We got started with some of the more fun projects. The first of which was suspending a branch that we wanted to hang a number of potted plants from. The tricky bit with this was that we had a sneaky suspicion that our ceiling just wasn't going to be sturdy enough to actually hold the suspended branch. So what we decided to do instead was to drill these hooks into our siding to create a bit more of a stable base for it. But then with those hung, I got to work on creating the actual plant hangers. I was inspired to do this after stumbling across a very interesting weathered branch at our local antique mall, thought it would look incredible with some potted plants hanging from it. So I didn't really follow any kind of tutorial for this, but essentially what I did was I just cut the rope to about the size and length that I wanted, making sure that it would have at least four strings to hold it up. Then I tied a slip knot in the center. This was going to loop over the branch to make sure that it stays secure. Then I just finished with tying a basic knot on the bottom. Next, I needed to figure out exactly where I wanted the branch suspended from, and I ended up settling on about two to three feet below the hangers. And for these hangers, I basically just repeated the same technique, but in reverse. So I tied slip knots for the ends attached to the branch, and then just used a couple regular knots for the ends that would rest on the hangers. Of course, making sure to snip off any excess cord. And I was feeling like the color of the hangers did clash just a bit with the wood, so I decided to play it safe and just to paint them white. I really love how this came out. This was a super affordable DIY and it adds just such a cool boho element to the space. The final thing I did to kind of complete the look was I just trimmed the edges and then also frayed the ends a bit so that it would look a little bit less like four cords and just more like kind of a, a bit of a frayed rope. Next, it was time to focus on furniture. For the most part, I wanted to reuse the furniture that I already had, but I did want to add a bit of storage as well as some vertical interest to the area by the door. So when I found this tall, narrow, galvanized metal shelf at Ikea for just $30, I knew that it would be the perfect solution. Of course, as with any Ikea piece, it was build it yourself, which I didn't have a problem with and it was pretty straightforward. The only thing I will say with this is that the holes on this piece didn't align quite as well as I've found with other Ikea furniture bits. So just something to keep in mind, I did use a drill for most of this though and I found that that really made the job a lot easier.
And the last sort of bigger project that I wanted to tackle was hanging string globe lights from the ceiling. Something that I think is really important whenever you're considering really any project, but I think especially an outdoor one, is not only how your space is going to look during the day, but also at night. Netting string lights is one of the easiest, most affordable, high impact ways to do that. So I just measured out how I wanted to space the lights. My goal was to create kind of a zigzag pattern going back and forth across the patio. Then I went in with siding clips on the side facing the house. These are really easy just to slide in. They can hold quite a significant amount of weight. Then on the opposite wall, there's a covered wood beam. So I just had Christopher drill a couple of holes and then we screwed in these small white upright hooks. And you guys know how I feel about cords. I'm all about trying to hide them in as much as possible. So I picked up this white outdoor extension cord at Home Depot and just ran it right along the corner of the wall to keep the cord nice and discreet. Then it was time to hang up the lights and I just ran the cord from side to side, trying to make sure that the string was properly untangled and that all the lights were facing down. Then one problem that I knew that we ran into was that the cord was a bit too long for our needs. When I ordered, I had to choose between a light string that was either too short or too long. So we ended up going with a longer option and just cut and secured the section that we didn't need. I didn't film this whole process, it is a bit finicky, but I will link a really helpful video on how to do that. Then I just used the clip on the final light to secure it in place. Then Christopher suggested that I'd probably be able to hide the cord behind the siding strip that runs kind of in the corner of this patio. It worked perfectly and I love that we were able to almost completely hide this extension cord. The end result looks great during the day, but wait until the end, I'll show you what it looks like at night. It truly is magical. But with the globe lights hung, I was finally able to add back in my furniture, giving me the canvas of this project to begin styling upon. From the very beginning, one word that I knew I wanted to define this space was oasis. So over the course of a couple of weeks, I collected a number of gorgeous plants and flowers from our local garden center. So I just got them all out. They were all in their original nursery containers. I just potted them up in a number of different pots and planters, some of which I already had on hand and a few of which I bought as well. Then all that was left was to add in the plants and accessories and to style up the space. I started with adding in the plants and I love the statement that these creeping jenny make hung from the branch. The bright green of the leaf contrasts just so well with the terracotta pots and it adds just a kind of fun whimsical touch to the space. I just went around adding various plants and flowers to all the little corners in this patio. I love the addition of the herbs in this greenhouse. All the greenery I added really did just make this whole place come alive. Then with a few final touches, the patio was finished and ready to be enjoyed. So as a reminder, this is the space that we began this process with, and this is what we've transformed it into. And 
to say that I am obsessed with how this space came out really is an understatement. We've taken what was a very sad looking builder grade patio and turned it into an outdoor room that marries together the feeling of a lush tropical oasis with a beautiful outdoor garden. I think it's safe to say that we've completely transformed this patio from a space that we never really wanted to spend time to one that we can't wait to just enjoy hours upon hours in. But I think probably my favorite part is that this space isn't just limited to use during the day either. At night, because of the patio lights and the lanterns that we've added, this place takes on a whole new life and magic of its own. And I'm already making plans to spend some quiet summer evenings out here. But now let's wrap this up with talking through our budget for the project. And usually our biggest expense here was the deck tiles. We spent $645 on the tiles themselves and then an additional $70 on the trim. And for the hanging branch planters, we spent $17 on the branch and $14 on the wall hooks. The only piece of furniture we got was the shelf and that came to $30. Then for the lights, we spent $56 on a 50 foot long set of lights, $8 on hooks and $9 on our extension cord. And I'm just going to lump all of our plants into one massive category, but if you do want a whole breakdown of all of the plants that I used, be sure to check out the description box and I'll leave all of them there. But our total for plants came to $136 with $70 of that, so just over half being split between the two larger plants that we purchased, which were the white Bird of Paradise and Alocasia. And for pots, again, we'll just do one overarching category here. We spent $106 on 15 pots. Again, the majority of that split between the two larger stone and cement ones that we purchased. Then for decor, there were a number of smaller items that we used to spruce up the space. The first was the mini greenhouse. We spent $20 on that. In total, I spent $122 on seven pillows, $20 on a watering can, $13 on our doormat, 37 on a set of two solar garden lights, 30 on a serving tray, 20 on a citronella candle, 17 on a pitcher, 25 on a four wick candle, and finally eight on this woven placemat. The total for that comes to $312. So all said and told, this entire patio project cost us less than $1,500. Our final total came to 1403 which considering all the quotes we got for someone to come in and only redo the patio flooring were all at least $5,000 I am very happy with. All right, well that about wraps up our patio transformation. I really hope you enjoyed coming along for this project. But now I would love to know what was your favorite part of this makeover? Be sure to let me know in the comments. And as always, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Bye.